Hello again. Now one style of music which I think every guitarist should be familiar with is blues. Now even if you're not wanting to become a, a blues guitarist per se, there's an awful lot of musical styles, particularly in the, the rock area, um, which are influenced by blues or they derive from blues in some way. So having a familiarity with blues uh, techniques and so on, it's a good stepping stone towards being able to master other techniques. Also, so many guitarists start playing blues, so if you come together with other musicians and you want some common ground, something to start jamming on, blues is a great place to start. So, you know, being familiar with some of the basic blues techniques, you know, it's, it's well worth having in your, in your vocabulary of, of, of techniques and so on. Now, saying blues, you know, that covers a, a whole spectrum of, of, of different styles, you know, whether it's acoustic blues and roots, right, the way through the more electric styles. Uh, what I want to talk about in this video is just the, the more general concepts behind blues playing and you know, it applies to all the different styles of blues and say also extent of the, the blues um, influenced musics like rock and so on. Start off with let's look at a, a scale which I think every guitarist needs to know and that's the minor pentatonic. Minor pentatonic is a five note scale as the name suggests pent means five and the minor pentatonic scale has the formula 1, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 7 and the octave. And we can add a flat 5th degree to that scale to give us a 6 note scale called the minor pentatonic flat 5. It's got the formula 1, flat 3, 4, flat 5, 5, flat 7, and the octave. And that scale, the minor pentatonic flat 5, also known as the minor blues scale. Now, I've already done another tutorial on YouTube uh, about the minor pentatonic and the, and the minor blues scale, so I'll put a link to it in the information section uh, down there so you can find it on YouTube. Um, all I'm wanting to do in this video now is just go through some of the more um, like fundamental concepts if you want a bit more detail on that scale and things you can do with it. So go over to that, uh, that link video. And with that scale you've got something you can use for playing all manner of, uh, of runs and licks and so on. And in blues like any style of music, but I think blues in particular, it's important to give the notes you know, space to to ring out and to to give them space to breathe and to to speak, rather than just you know shredding away on endless sixteenth notes. You know, let you know let the notes give you some feeling in the piece. <laughs> to some, some riff type stuff. Now a riff is just a you know a repeated pattern of notes and there's one or two that you'll hear in lots of different blues songs. Um, derived from the minor blues scale and basically we're going to be using the one, the flat three and the fourth degree. These degrees. So let's look at something in key of A, and for that I'm going to use the open A string, the flat third degree I'm going to play at the C on the third, uh, third fret, and for the fourth degree I'll play the D on the fifth fret. The first riff I'm thinking of is the one that goes from the one to the flat three, one to the flat three, and then the four. come across quite often. Same notes, slightly different order. One, four, flat three, and the one. Or you might hear that played flat three, four, flat three, one. And 
something that's quite fun to do if you're playing with another guitarist is just jamming around trading licks and using one of those riffs as the basis for a jam so what you would do is each of you together would play the riff in unison and then one of you would play a few bars just of the chord like that and while one is playing the chord part the other one will play a lead line over the top of it like that so the idea is that you would take it in turns so you play the riff play a lead line while the other one just plays the chord play the riff then you go back to playing the chord while the other guy plays the lead line and while you're doing that taking it in turns playing the lead line listen to the lead line that the, was played the previous time and try and evolve that and build on it embellish it and if you play that that sort of pattern for quite a while it's interesting to see how the the whole thing builds up and the that lead line might become more complex um, and more interesting as, as the whole thing moves on and it's, it's really it's a really good thing to try so if you ever sit down with another guitar player try something like that great fun let's also talk about the 12 bar blues chord progression now this is one, another one of the things you just absolutely have to know as a guitarist you know you have to think you can call yourself a complete guitarist if you don't know this and i have done another tutorial link down there uh, on youtube which talks about the the 12 bar blues progression in a, in a bit a bit more detail than I'm going to cover here but basically to summarize the 12 bar blues progression is as the name suggests 12 bars and the way the progression goes is you have four bars of the one chord followed by two bars of the four chord followed by two bars of the one chord one bar of the five chord one bar of the four chord bars of the one chord. So in the key of A you'd be playing four bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A, one bar of E, one bar of D, two bars of A. something that's great to do just you know have that uh, 12 bar blues chord progression playing in the background and then play some lead lines over the top of it using a minor pentatonic flat five minor blues scale that's great fun lastly what I want to talk about is what's called a walking bass line um, this is something that's probably going to be more sort of common knowledge amongst uh, bass players but it's something as a guitarist you'll come across as well so I thought it's worth mentioning the idea of a walking bass line these could come up a lot with 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 blues styles where basically you, you're playing a riff and you the pattern of your fingers it's a bit like the walking around the around the neck first example i want to look at pattern goes like this starts on a one then goes to a five then goes to a flat seven and it goes to an octave so we'll get this So you can see there why it's called a walking bass line because of the, the pattern that your your first and your third finger are making as they go across the across the fingerboard. And we take that and we play it through a twelve bar blues progression, taking the pattern there starting here we're playing in the key of A, so starting on an A note and going one, five, flat, seven, octave. Fourth, start on a D, then back down to the A for a couple of bars. And the whole pattern beginning on an E, down to a D, back to an A. 
there, just taking that walking bass line and moving it through a 12 bar blues chord progression. So that's one example of a walking bass line. Another one, same notes in a different order, we'll go from the 1 to the octave to the flat 7 to the 5. This sort of pattern. For the next example we're going to go to play an eighth note rather than a quarter note. And what we're going to play is one and a one, five and a five, flat seven and a five, flat seven and an octave. Last example, we're going to play eighth notes for the first three beats around one octave flat seven then on the last beat we're going to go from four flat five five so there's some examples of like walking bass lines now as i said at the start of the video we were just looking at some blues essentials here, things that you really do need to know. Even if you don't aspire to be a blues guitarist per se, if you're playing rock or whatever, there's so many styles that are influenced by blues or derived from blues, so understanding those techniques is useful. So take time to get familiar with the blues scale, 12 bar progressions and some of those riffs and so on. And you know, check out the, the other videos that go into some of these in a bit more detail that I've linked to uh, down in the information section on YouTube. Okay, so have fun with that, uh, keep practicing, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Bye for now.